Hello and welcome to another exciting CG Cookie tutorial. My name is Chris Bailey and today we're going to be looking at how to make coffee beans up close and personal. Let's get started. Now, this course today is inspired by the brand new release on CGCookie.com. Now, this is an amazing course. It's been put together by Ken Trammell. It's a continuation of his course entitled Sessions. In the second part that he's just released is a series of tutorials, each one focusing on the macro world. So how to do macro photography images really close and high detail with lots of depth of field. I wanted to make something inspired by it today. And I thought coffee beans might be a really cool subject matter for some macro photography. So I've got my reference here and I'm gonna start by clearing out my scene. So I'm gonna hit A to select all and X to delete. Now, what I wanna do is first model out a basic shape of the bean. Now. I want to have multiple beans in the scene and they're organic objects so they all have slightly different shapes. Now I want to be able to have that be a procedural process so I don't have to model each bean individually and make sure they all have these bespoke shape details. So we're going to come up with a way of doing that. So what we're going to do first is model a really basic shape that's really even and then we're going to add some distortion to it. We're going to start off with a UV sphere so we're going to go shift A, mesh and we're going to add a UV sphere. I'm going to go into edit mode with it and hit S to scale and X and we're just gonna scale it out on the X and S and Y, bring it out a little bit. And I'm just trying to get that distinct coffee bean shape. It's pretty good. Now coffee bean is flat on the top and rounded on the bottom. So I'm gonna take everything that's at the top, all this stuff up here. Um, and actually what I might do is let's just grab, we'll grab this top ring by holding down Alt and I'll grab that guy there. And I'm gonna turn on proportional editing and hit S to scale and Z. And then I'm gonna roll my mouse wheel and just do that a bit so we can flatten it out. And then I'm gonna hit G and Z to bring that down. And that's gonna create a nice flat shape. I'm going to expand my selection with control plus and then hit S and Z and I'm gonna roll my mouse wheel. And this will just help me to flatten this out a little bit further. G and Z and bring it down. Just kind of sculpting it out a little bit with the proportional fall off. Um, I think that's really gonna give us a good result. I'm pretty happy with this. This looks coffee bean-ish. Now the coffee bean has a distinct um, sort of trench that goes through the middle. Um, there's this like crack that goes right, right down the middle here. So I wanna be able to model that. Um, so I need to get a bit of like um, a trench like space going through the center. So we need to think about how to create that. I think this center vertex, the way this is set up, isn't going to work well for us. So let's control plus. I'm going to delete this center vertex and that row there. So I'm going to hit X to delete and delete those vertices. And then I'm going to hold down alt and select this loop. And then I'm going to type F3 and type in grid fill. And we're going to hit the grid fill tool. Now I'm going to open up the grid fill and I will roll the span until I get a good result. I might keep the span pretty high. Maybe I'll roll the offset. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm going to try simple banding. Yeah, that's going to give me nice straight rows. And this is what I want. So you can see this center section here now have this has this like straight trench like shape to it. Now I want to kind of even these out a little bit more, I think, to try and create some smoother geometry. So I'm going to hit control plus expand my selection out until I get basically all these, I think. And then I'm gonna go F3. I'm gonna type in smooth and come down here to vertex smooth vertices. And I'm gonna turn up that smoothing. And you can see what's happening is it's just going to try and smooth and even out the shape and size of all those guys. I think that's pretty good right there. Looks nice. I might turn off the Z smoothing just so we still have that little bit of depth to it. And that looks pretty good. Cool. I'm going to hold down Alt and click that loop right there. I'm going to scale that in a little bit, just kind of make it more even between the two. All right, great. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to face mode with three on my number pad at the top, or you can come up here and just click here to get the face mode. And I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift and select these two edge loops. Now, I don't want everything. I don't want all this stuff down here to the bottom. So I will go into the uh, side view, turn on transparent or x-ray view, and then hit B to box select and hold down shift and drag a, drag a box around all those. And I might also deselect these here like so. Okay, so now we've just got this center 
trench area. Now I'm going to inset this with I, bring that in a little bit and then G and Z and bring it down. I'm going to hold an Alt and select this edge and then Shift and Alt and click this one to get both those. And I'm going to hit Control B to bevel and then I'm going to roll my mouse wheel just to smooth that out. Now we're going to get some weird geo on the edge here, but that's all right. Not too worried about it. I might do the same down here. Hold on Alt, Control B to bevel. Just bring that out, watching that it doesn't intersect there. Sure. I'm going to right click and shade smooth. And now what I want to do is I'm going to come over to the modifiers tab. And now we're going to first add a subdivision surface. So I just click the add modifier, go to search and type in subdivision surface. I'll crank it up to two. And then I'm going to add in a displacement. So we're going to type in displace. Now with this displacement, I'm going to click new to create a new texture. We can call this uh, bean uh, surface maybe. And what we can do is click this little tab here, which will take us down to the texture tab. It's a little shortcut. And then we're going to click on image or movie. And we're going to set this to clouds. That will give us this nice noise pattern. Now we're going to turn the size way up because we want this thing to kind of affect the overall shape. Back over to the modifiers tab. And I'm going to take the mid level up so it gets a bit puffy. Or sorry, down. We're going down with the mid level, but up with the puffiness, if that makes sense. And we can take the strength down and just play with that a little bit. Now back up in the modifier stack, we're going to change the coordinates from local to object. And then I'm going to create shift A, an empty, plane axis empty. And I'm going to come back and select that empty as the object to generate the coordinates from. Now, what will happen with this is as I move this empty or the sphere, it's going to basically pin this noise that we've created in 3D space around wherever the location of this empty is. And as I move this object, it's basically moving through the noise. So you can see if I hit G and X, it's like sliding. You can see the noise stays static and the mesh is kind of like squeezed through it. So um, we can also create some cool control by scaling this. We can adjust the size of the, the noise and stuff just by scaling the empty. So this will give us a little bit more interactive control. Okay, cool. So let's start texturing this object and making it look like a coffee bean. I'm going to switch over to rendered view and I'm going to click on this little drop down tab with that little arrow and I'm going to turn off scene world. And I'm going to just pick one of these. I'll go with the interior. It's like a living room space. And just play with the strength a little bit. And I'm going to click on the bean. We're going to bring our view up a little bit here. And I'm going to switch this from the timeline editor to the shader editor. And I'm going to click new and we will call this coffee bean. All right, let's come down and make this thing look cool. All right, so first up, we need to get some color. We need to get some texture and we need to create a lot of micro interests or variation on the surface. OK, now let's first up, let's let's get the base color working for us. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a base color. I'm going to get something that's, you know, it's a sort of brownish uh, brown red kind of color. This looks about right. I'm just referencing my my image. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to take my roughness up. And I'm kind of looking for a baseline. So what I mean by that is if I could only have one color and one level of roughness on this object, what should it be? And I'm trying to find that number. So I'm just playing around with the overall look. And then we can add in the, the detailed variation once we kind of have a baseline that we can work from. All right, let's get a little bit of variation in the color. So um, let's come over here and let's grab a color ramp and let's grab a noise and we'll take the factor of the noise into the color ramp here. And that'll take the color into the surface just so we can see what it looks like. And this color ramp will give me the chance to increase the contrast on this. And let's bring the detail right up to 10. So we get a lot of micro detail, maybe the roughness up bit as well. Tiny bit of distortion just to kind of swirl it up a little bit. That's pretty nice. I might switch just to ease. Ease will give me more of a fall off. So you can see that creates a lot of really nice detail all across the surface. And so we can use this to create some variation in the color. But we also want to detect some of the shape because different parts of the surface are exposed to air at different levels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, an ambient occlusion node. Now ambient occlusion is great. It works in EV as well as in cycles, which I really like. Um, and so we're going to use this to kind of build out a little bit of surface detection. 
So I'm going to grab another color ramp and I will drag the color of the ambient occlusion into the factor. And we're just going to look at this as is by itself. So I'll plug it straight in. And then what we're going to do is tick on only local. So it's just going to look at this particular object, not the objects around it. And then what, it's, what we're going to do is click inside and that will look at the inside geometry, not just the outside. Now, in order for this node to work, we have to come over here to our render settings under EV and we need to turn on ambient occlusion. We're also going to go ahead and turn on bloom and screen space reflections, but you have to have ambient occlusion turned on for this to work. Now I can turn my samples up and you can see we start to get a little bit of uh, some shape to this to this node. Now we can change the distance. This basically says how far away does a polygon need to be from another polygon for it to shade dark. Um, so we can adjust this a little bit. And that's good. You can see it's just giving us like a little bit of definition around these contact points. We want to mix these in a little bit. So I'm going to go for a mix uh, color node. And I'm going to take the smudges and pop them into B and I'll take this and I'll pop it into A. And I will set this to set it to multiply. And let's see what the result looks like as we mix these two together. I'm going to switch this uh, color ramp to ease as well. So we've got that nice fall off. I'm going to switch this to linear light. And I'm going to set the factor to one. I think this looks good because it's going to create this nice breakup where we're getting the variation at some points, but we're away from those edges where the ambient occlusion node's kicking in and it starts to fade away a little bit better. So I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to plug this into a, another color ramp, or we could use a, a mix color, grab that mix color. And this time we're going to plug this into the factor because this is all black and white values. It's going to be a factor that we can use to determine we know how much it's going to mix between these two colors. And I can grab color pick the color that I've already picked as my baseline. And then I can take one of these and just push it off, maybe go a bit lighter. And if we plug that into the results here of the base color and this into the surface. Now, keeping these pretty subtle is going to be important to making this look good. I might take the saturation down on the inner one. Let's keep going. So we're going to use this system in some of these other bits here, like the roughness. So let's go ahead and try, try that out now. So I will take this and I'm going to create another color ramp. And this is a good example of like how you can use a mix or a color ramp. So I could take this result that we're using as the factor and I can plug it in here as the factor of the color ramp. And now this is going to basically determine, you know, how we map between black and white, just like we're determining here, how do we map between these two versions of brown? Um, so what I can do now is set, you know, my base roughness is 0.6148, copy that number. I'm going to just put this down here in the black value. So I'll play, paste it into the value section. And I can take this one and do the same thing, paste it to the value section. So now these are exactly the same. And this is going to basically result in the same number right into the oldest. So I can take this now and I can drag one of these up or down to create a little bit more shininess in some places and not in others. Drag them to create, together to create a bit more contrast. Just trying to find that sweet spot. You can see here we've got patches where it's quite shiny and this these patches where it's quite dry. I'll just bring that down so the fall off's a little bit nicer between those. Okay, now let's work out some bump for this. So the texture of these beans, there's kind of two levels of texture. There's this like soft sort of rounded bump noise and then we have um, sections with more of a detail, harsh kind of fine grain noise. So let's do that generalized bump first. And we already have a little bit going on because of the displacement. So what we can do is just compound that a little bit with a noise texture. And we're going to feed that into a color ramp. I'll take the factor into the factor and then let's grab a bump node and drop it here into the height. And then we can take the normal and drop it into the tangent. Sorry, not the tangent into the normal up here. Okay, let's take the detail up to 10 and I wanna take the distance down. Now the distance is the distance between the dark value and the light value. So this noise texture is generating this sort of fake geometry, right? So the light hits this coffee bean and bounces off in all these you know directions to give us this sense of texture. But right now Blender thinks that the difference between the black point and the white point of this noise texture is one meter which is quite large, right? We don't want it to be that big. So we're going to bring it right down. We're going to go to point 0.1, something like that. And there we go. That's a much more subtle texture. And I'm going to make the scale much smaller. I'm going to take it down to one, 
It's a bit too small now. I increase the distance a little bit, maybe to 0.2. I actually take the detail down a bit. I want these bumps to be a bit more rounded. Take my distortion to 0.1. Okay, so the center area, this trench, it's sort of like a split, right? So it's it's quite dark, like in a normal coffee bean, like the center bit of that split is a bit more of a darker color. So we need something dark inside here that then gets light as it goes out. I'll go to face mode, I'll hold down alt and shift and click these two edge rows to get this center section here. And I'm gonna go over into uh, edit mode. I'm gonna go to vertex paint. And I want to switch to face mode. And I can see that these faces are, are selected. I'll switch to flat shaded mode. And I'm going to come over, make sure I'm in vertex paint. And then I'm going to paint just this dark color right into this area. I might switch to X-ray. Actually, what I'll do is I will um, go into edit mode and alt click these right here and then control plus to expand that selection. And I'll alt click this loop as well. Control plus to expand it one more time, I think. And then I'm going to deselect these outer faces use my brush selection, which is C. So hold down, uh, just click C and that will switch to brush selection mode. Then we can kind of paint these selections. That you hit escape to exit every time you want to stop using brush selection. All right, so with all those selected, we can now switch over to vertex paint mode and then make sure we're on face painting. And I'm just going to set the first color to black and paint this that will paint out all those guys. Switch over to the blur tool and alt to deselect. We'll blur it out a little bit along those edges so it's not so sharp. And I'm just going to paint, paint this area so it's dark. This has created a new vertex group. So if I come over here to the green tab and head back to object mode, you'll see under color attributes, we've got this new little tag here called attribute. And this is what we've just painted. This is our vertex color. So we can call this um, vertex, vertex paint. And what we can do with this is we can come into our shader editor and come over here back to rendered view. And we can actually pull this straight into our system. So if we grab color attribute, this little drop down, we click that, you can see vertex paint. There it is there. We can take the color, we can plug it straight in. You'll see it looks just like what we had before. So we can take this and use it to adjust this material a little bit. So I'm gonna bring it up here and I'm gonna use it to darken this base color. So I might just take it and add in a mix color node, drop it here and I'll take this one into the B and I will set this to multiply. I try color burn, that's that factor bit too intense. So I might come over here and add a color ramp in between the color attribute and the in the color mix node. And then I can take this black value off of black to something a bit lighter, maybe set this to ease. Now the thing we get are these big cracks that kind of go through the surface. So I want to create something that's going to emulate that for me. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a Voronoi texture. Now I'll plug the distance into the surface and then I'm going to create a color ramp. And I will drop this color ramp here and I'm going to bring these really close together here at the edge and then take my scale down and maybe open these up a little bit so we can actually see and take my detail up a little bit, maybe to one and my roughness down. And I'm just trying to get um, some nice shapes that look like these large cracks that you see across the surface of the beans. That looks pretty good. All right, cool. Now I want to add this into the bump. So I'm going to also want to break it up a little bit more. So I'm going to grab a texture coordinate node and I will drop it over here and I'll take the generated into the vector. And then I'm going to grab a noise texture and just wrap it. Oops, I'm going to move these guys up Get a bit more room. I'm going to create a mix color node and just drop it here. And I'm gonna mix in some noise into the UVs by taking this factor and plugging it into the second slot. Now what we can do is I can slowly increase this. And as I turn the scale up, you can see we're gonna get more breakup. We'll really break these things up 
nicely for us. All right, now with this system, what we're gonna do is going to grab all of it. I'll just unplug it and grab this whole thing. I'm gonna bring it down here. I'm gonna create a mix color node and just drop it right here. And we're gonna plug this socket in. And then we're gonna hook the BSDF back up. There we go, you can see we get these nice like cracks across the surface. Now we're just gonna make sure it looks like they're going the right way, which it does. Now let's figure out how to mix this all in. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip these. So we're gonna make the white value happen first, and I'm gonna set this to multiply. And now I can just turn this factor up to introduce these guys. I'm also gonna change this all linear to ease, just to create a better uh, follow. -up. Let's try turning the scale up on this and widening out the color ramp. That's gonna actually create some cool effects. That looks really neat. All right, I feel like it'd be nice if we had these large cracks kind of influencing the overall color, making it a bit darker, as well as removing some of that uh, roughness. So let's mix those in as well. So I'm gonna come over here, Shift D over here for the base color. We're gonna multiply in this and bring it up, plug it in, and I'll turn the factor down so it's not so strong on the influence. And I'm also going to take it and Shift D duplicate. I'm gonna bring it over here and I'll plug in for the roughness. But what we wanna do this time is actually we're gonna invert this because we wanna take the dark crack areas, make them white and then add them to the roughness so that they can become less shiny wherever this stuff is. So I'm gonna switch this to add and I'm gonna grab this right here and then I'm gonna grab an invert color. There it is, just drop it there. And now we can adjust this factor to get it just right. Now, I also feel like it'd be nice to kind of add in a little more roughness to the specular, and I mean the roughness, um, roughness to the noise texture that drives the roughness. <laughs> Play around with that a little bit. And then lastly, it'd be good if these, um, this, this you know, texture that we've built here with this Voronite, it'd be good if this actually was driven by something. In fact, let's let it be driven by the object coordinate of this empty as well. So wherever this thing moves, these cracks will change as well. So we have different textures across these. Now the scale is going to change, so we need to adjust that. Let's grab the empty. And now we can adjust the scale back down to something that looks right. Now as I grab this, you'll see that that texture moves as well through the space. Back off the darkness on this a little bit. I think it's maybe a little bit too intense. And that's pretty good. All right, so now that we've kind of put all these things together to make this bean, let's take it and let's duplicate it and put a few around on a surface and see how it looks. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Mesh Plane to create a floor. And I'm gonna click New to create a new material for that. And I'm just gonna darken it up. And that's really good. I'll bring it down a bit so that our bean is kind of sitting on it. And now I will take that bean and I'm just gonna hide my, my, my set. And I'm going to Shift D to duplicate and then rotate Z and grab Shift Z. And then I'll switch to locals just so it's a bit easier to manipulate these. And I'm just going to arrange a few just randomly here to create a little bit of a scene. And there we go. We've got all the coffee beans scattered here. I've duplicated a whole bunch of them and just kind of placed them roughly uh, so they're not intersecting too badly. Uh, it looks pretty good. And I've got my camera here and I'm just gonna come down to the camera tab. I'm just gonna select my camera and I will come over to depth of field, turn that on, turn the f-stop right down so I can really get it set up. And I'm also gonna increase my app, my focal length, to something like hundred mils, I think. I'll pull back just to help with that macro photography feel. And then I'll set my focal distance. Just push this right out until I start to get some of these beans in focus. I might pick one in particular to focus on. I'm just gonna set two sun lamps and give them a slightly warm feel. So by using a longer focal length, like 100 millimeter, it feels like our camera's really zoomed in to a tiny space. And then by having our um, depth of field really pushed, I like to push it by pushing the f-stop to a really low value so I can get a lot of that depth of field. And seeing things fall off through that shallow focus really helps make it feel like a really tiny object and sells the scene. If you really enjoyed this tutorial, it was a nice little taster for you. I hope you're interested in checking out the full course over on CG Cookie, where there's a lot of other really cool things that Kent takes you through. Kent also goes through a lot more high fidelity detail than I do in his level of skill when it comes to creating 
photorealistic proceduralism is next level. So if you thought this was cool, just go see what he's doing. It's way better. So hope you do check it out. Thanks again for watching this one. If you liked it, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in the future. And until the next one, I will see you later. Have a fantastic week. Bye. Thank you.